Well, today I'm out jockeying uh, cellular cameras out on the wheeler, and uh, I'll show you why here in just a minuto, why I'm moving these cameras at all. at the difference this is a brand new camera this year same camera as that one but just one year of weathering really fades them out My guess is, this is another camera I'm getting ready to move. Oh, there's my other post. That's good that I found that. But anyways, he come out of this wall here, this, I guess you call it just woods wall for easy sake, and he either stopped and realized, oops, there's the house over that way, and they can see me, and then turned around and went back, or he come out and walked along this field edge and cut in and went down in into the stream before this camera. Now, this camera... And that field edge is probably, it might be 100 yards right in that range. Yeah, I'm going to call it that, you know, just for rough numbers. Say it could be 90, could be 105, but, yep, I'm going to move this one too. So three more cellular cameras are going on this side of the property, and I'll run, and, and there's a slew of conventionals here. I haven't even pulled those cards yet, so, yep, you know, I, one thing I'll never understand is like, it's 2022. There's cameras everywhere. Why you would go in and shoplift and think that you're not being seen shoplifting or trespassing or doing whatever it is you do and think that you're probably not either getting videotaped or at least a still shot taken of you is beyond my comprehension. But what a lot of these guys do is beyond my comprehension and i look at it this way oh it's only trespassing what else is he willing to do wrong what else you know he's willing to walk by your signs or nowadays purple paint what else is he willing to do so it ends like i said it ends right here right now and uh all hands on deck there's going to be at least four cellular cameras on this end of the property along with conventionals backing those up so Anything that crawls, slithers, or walks is going to get a picture taken of it. And I go through this probably pretty bad about every two to three years. A new batch of guys or, or the onesies and twosies come in. So, and you got to get on it. You got to get on it in August or October is, it's over for you. You get once a year 
to get it right or your hunting season's done. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this camera too and this stake, assuming I didn't pound it into the ground with reckless abandon. And a lot of people will say, well, can't you call the game commission and have them do something about it? Now, our Pennsylvania Game Commission is very pro-hunter oriented. They're not pro-landowner oriented. And that's why for the most part, when there's a trespassing issue here, you have to go to and through the state police. Even though the advent of adding Sunday hunting to the rifle season, and there's like, you know, one in archery, but anyways, adding that was supposed to increase write-ups for trespassing and and they just don't do it uh, i called last year the pennsylvania game commission and they showed up like 24 hours later i mean they're and i and i don't know if they're understaffed i assume they are but when you commun when you talk to them you can just tell they're not interested so it's state police now the fish commission the pennsylvania fish commission they're on it they are short staffed. Uh, the main head guy told me flat out, he says, we have 15 guys to work three counties, Erie, Venang uh, Erie, Warren, and Crawford County. And I think he even said Venango County, so four. Um, and, and that includes all of Lake Erie, the tributaries and the whole work. So, and, and you go up there and for steelhead, it's not to buy. I mean, those guys are literally, I stopped doing it years ago when the word got out on the street, we used to have the whole streams to basically ourselves. You could go up there like on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, and have the whole place to yourself. It was amazing. And then they started publishing it. Wow, this is world-class fishing. And then it, but anyways, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. But the, the, the Fish Commission, you call them, and they're a lot more on it than our game, Pennsylvania Game Commission. I think it has a little bit more to do with uh, revenue than they'd like to admit. Boy, it goes to show how much of a drought we're in. We had rain last night. Now, I don't know how much. Um, I didn't even look at the rain gauge. I mean, even if it was a quarter of an inch, it didn't even, it didn't raise this at all. I mean, we're right down to rock bottom. I mean, I'm not even wearing hip boots. I'm just wearing my regular old, you know, rubber boots. And I'm gonna be able to walk this whole stream and not go over these boots. And, uh, sheesh, you know, this is, this is a portion of the property I really don't frequent, especially this time of year. You have does in here with fawns, um, and it's just, it, it's posted. But, you know, the thing of it is when you have trespassers or a, even a trespasser, uh, the world pretty much stops. And it, it now has evolved 100% around catching the perpetrator, so... Yeah, let me slide down this bank. This should be fun. Okay. Right here is the camera that caught the perp. Coming out of the woods into the field. And, uh, of course, you can see this is all soybeans. I'm not making a lot of noise coming in through here. Decent crop of apples. But yeah, he would have came through all them weeds. The bugs must have been just, honestly, between me and you, hellacious. And I walked this along the way, and I'm not, I looked for footprints, and I 100% am not seeing them. You know, you'd see at least one half a footprint or indentation, and I'm just not seeing it. So I think, I think my first guess is right. I think he come out and realized that he was going to be seen from the house, and he turned around and boogied. I mean, you can see, you know, my tracks there and stuff, but no, he's he's vamoosed, hands down. This looks like a really good tree to put a camera on just to cover the creek. Um, got to tell you this thing's grown like a weed over the years I haven't really noticed it or looked at it in a couple of years it's a black walnut um, my dad's pretty much responsible for all these black walnuts growing here 
uh, he would he'd bring a bucket or whatever down and throw them around and he actually planted a couple so and uh, not not a lot of enemies to these trees because they're quite bitter to eat for just about everything other than a I don't know squirrel but uh yeah I'm gonna get a camera on this tree and keep moving on with the other two up the stream all right I have the first one mounted and really in these back areas this is where you want your cellular cameras anyways the hope is is that you have a good signal I will tell you the browning cameras do not use a lot of batteries that's that's one of the many things I like about them again there's problems with the app that they're uh, trying to work out I didn't have any trouble at all last year with the app but this year I, I have already um, again I'm trying to request that picture of the trespasser in HD so that I can share it on the uh, local Facebook pages and somebody knows them somebody absolutely knows them but what I do here is I you know kind of angle the camera and, and then point my arm down where I think it's going to be in the stream and you got to remember too is a certain amount above the the lens you're going to cover and a certain amount below I guess if it was sideways you could say it was you know two o'clock ten o'clock but vertically so I'm going to get down there and have it take a picture of me and then check the app to make sure it's exactly angled where I want it to be Okay, based on that picture, I want the bottom of that camera angled up just slightly. So what I do is I just look for a little thin stick. Something like, hey look, apple in the stream. Um, I don't know, it's not, not anything real big, something like, maybe like this. Yeah, that'll work. Something about that thick. Just give me just a slight angle because right now I'm covering about two-thirds of the width of the creek and I want to cover it all. So I'll take the stick just slightly angled, not too much, but definitely enough to make a little bit of a difference. And that'll, that'll give me about a 20% increase in coverage. And like I say, in drought conditions, even after a rain, I can, I don't know, what am I? Low shin deep? I mean, and, and this is probably one of the deeper stretches. I'll be able to pretty much cross at will. Boy, that bank side's really eroded. I mean bad. I would say to the tune of within 10 to 15 years, it's maybe 20, it's in the field. So something's gonna have to be done here, riprap put in or, or something, but it's also in a race the other way. And I'll show you that up here. Oh, the island. The island, there's a railroad tie. This really shouldn't be split here. Um, there's a sycamore tree up here and it fell into the creek. And ain't nothing moving it other than time and man. But what it's allowing it to do is come on this side and wash this side out. And I'll show you up here what needs to happen. Well, it's been about four years, but this big sycamore fell into the into the creek, and a big enough flood actually captured it and washed it exactly where it's at. But you see that root system? I mean, it just acted like a good working set of brakes on an airplane. And this was and probably still is a decent fishing hole. It was better when the tree was there. But you can see clear over there, and that's the highway, that's Route 97. But you can see clearly there's a lot of erosion going on along here. And actually that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping the erosion just keeps eating away at this bank. You got, you know, you got thorn, thorny locust. You got another um, 
massive sycamore tree. I mean, I, got to be 100 feet in the air. But, but anyways, the, the 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 hope is that it just keeps eroding that way, and I gain all this bank side back, and the creek is on that side. That's the hope. So, losing it here will save me from losing it over there, what I just showed you. Anyways, I think I can walk up the edge here. Yeah, so somebody's definitely been here fishing. I mean, there's, there's, there's boot tracks all over this. I mean, left, right, and center. There's track there. There's a boot track there. There's tracks there. So, they're, they're, somebody's coming in here and fishing the living dog snot out of this. And uh, I don't want them to. And last I checked, one of the things that makes this the greatest country in the world is private land ownership and private land ownership rights. And then I'll do the same thing with this. Uh, this one's up high enough, and I think it's angled enough that I'm going to get the entire platform here. And then I'll do the same thing with this camera. Um, the key thing is, while the foliage is on these trees and surrounding it, uh, making sure you got at least three bars out of five. So it will indeed transmit. But uh, as we get closer to fall, um, you know, I don't plan on running this here more than a couple of weeks. I know I've got uh, perps coming in because I got the I got the tracks and a fish just jumped there. And I have no idea what it was. I assume it was a trout. But anyways, um, you know, I plan on running this a couple of weeks. Uh, if they're if they're frequent flyers, I'll it won't take. I don't think it'll take two weeks to get them. But yep, there you go. And you say, well, aren't you afraid they'll steal your camera? Not before I have a full face picture of them and post it every which way but loose. And like I said, most these ninety nine percent of them are local yokels, so you you, you trespass. And like I said, twenty twenty two, you steal a camera, you do a bunch of stupid stuff. What that'll actually do? These are two hundred dollar cameras. These Brownings a piece, and uh, you know that'll put you into the misdemeanor. Probably, I don't know M two range, along with a defiant criminal trespass so yep it just adds to it all right let's add, grab this third camera and move on to the next hot spot yeah this is another good hole here and what, what it, you know the water's low right now but what it does is it comes down and washes this out a little bit you can see they did put riprap there up to a certain point and they're gonna have to State's going to have to come in and put it there, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble on that highway. But anyways, um, what the fish do is they hug them rocks. And if you can run a lure right, or get your bait over in that area this time of day, I mean, you can just slam them in here. Trout, smallmouth bass, pretty much it. Okay, another spot here where definitely a guy or two has come through here. Um, you head south that way, you'll run right pretty much smack dab into the house or in the barn. Um, and it looks like within the last, well, it could have been yesterday's trespasser for sure. I have to pull the conventional camera cards to find out. Hopefully I get some better pictures, but it's not going to matter when I get that high definition picture back. It's going to show every zit and word on his body. So, but anyways, he, somebody came through here. I don't know if it was him in particular, but somebody definitely came through here and plopped in the creek now I almost don't think it was him because it looked like he had jeans on and I think part of the reason he was using the land as a passage is because he didn't really want to get wet and right here unless he stood right there and fished into there he would have got wet well look at there the old fireball cinnamon whiskey Hey, if you're trespassing, you might as well do it drunk. Let me explain something to you that are not in the know with what the trespassing laws are in Pennsylvania. They have what they refer to as, or label, navigable streams and rivers. Okay, If they are navigable streams and rivers listed in Pennsylvania, um, you're free to float down them 
you're free to walk down them. You're free to do, you probably ain't gonna walk if it's navigable, because that means a pretty good sized boat can float on that. But this is non-navigable waters, okay? So, you know, I, really most of the time, even if you kayak, you'd be carrying your, your yak or your canoe most of the time. Um, so this is not listed under navigable waters in Pennsylvania. Therefore, if you're in the creek, like I am, you're trespassing, and especially if the landowner owns both sides of the creek, and I do. I am in the jungle. But the one thing I've learned about trespassers, they're just like deer, they'll take the path of least resistance. That's all monoflora rows up against the creek. And in through here, it's open. Comes right through here. There's a trail there. I'm guessing maybe he took that yesterday. There's a pop bottle there. You know, and that's just it though. Oh, look, bleeding. I thought something hurt on my finger. No brain, no pain, but anyways, there's a pop bottle there, you know, guys trespassing up to, uh, my pop's empty, they just whip it in the weeds, they don't care. But yeah, I think the deer and the people would come right through here if they're not walking the creek itself. So yeah, this should do. Do an ops check. Let's see what we got for picture. So based on that picture, I'm not covering all of this. So I'm gonna move that back about two feet and see if that helps. All right, I moved it back about three feet um, and it's angled down a little more. So pretty much anything coming through here, I'm gonna catch it. But let's have a look at the picture. All right, we're in a situation again where I need a stick underneath that because my head was cut off and it pretty much defeats the purpose of catching a trespasser if you don't have their head. Although it will pay you their back here. And you can get somebody on them pretty quick. Mm. That stick should do it. It's not going to take a whole bunch. And I just stick it in behind there. You want to play games? I'm all in. Now, you can see the difference here. The trampling that I showed you earlier compared to this. This is this is deer careening their way through this, slightly bent over and moved out of the way, but not smashed. Now when I come up to this camera, I'm just gonna walk by it like I don't even know it's there. Kind of like a trespasser will do. Should take my picture right about now you know and some of you guys that are in the know when it comes to hunting you're gonna say well you know you went and set up three four cameras basically in and around your sanctuaries didn't you go in and booger your deer yeah i absolutely did but i'd rather booger and disturb them august 15th or 16th than october 15th or 16th got to get it cleared the Fifth Amendment protects your private property rights, hands down. Hey dude, thanks for honking, it really made a difference. The Fifth Amendment protects your private property rights in terms of the government can't come and seize you without due process. And I can't emphasize it enough, you know, everybody talks about, there's 33 amendments in the Constitution, and everybody, Second Amendment, Second Amendment, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. What about private property rights? Is one amendment more valuable than the other? I would absolutely say no. And I get it, there's there's a lot of douchebaggery on YouTube and I would say up to 50% of you guys are completely willing to use and abuse somebody, whether it's their property, their equipment or otherwise. And the reason I know that is because I've seen other trespassing videos where the comments are perplexing. You wanna take away my fifth amendment? You might as well take my second, my first, my fourth, all the rest of them too. Private land ownership, Fifth Amendment. In closing, I'll say this. I'm not trying to trip anybody up into the law. I'm not. I have no desire to do that. In fact, I have the desire for the opposite. 
for you to see my signs, for you to see my purple paint, and you to make a choice, a staunch decision, which I think about 99% of the people that when they see a no trespassing sign or purple paint, they're just like, nope. But it's the one percenters, you might as well get you a tattoo, one percenters that are disrespectful and don't think anything major will happen to them. And I don't want something major to happen to you for trespassing. I just want you to stop doing it. And if it requires me to take you to court five times, eight times, know this, I'll be there an hour early waiting for you. I've caught kids fishing back here. Uh, you know, trout season, you know, I think it opens typically the second Saturday, April, although it's been earlier, but that's not the point. You know, if a, I, one time I was fishing, or I wasn't fishing, I had friends over that were fishing, and young lad walked up through here. He's about 14, and he, you know, had his gear on and stuff, and he'd walk the creek, and and uh, when he got up there, I asked him if he had any luck, and, and I said, you know, for further reference, it is posted property, you know. Oh, I didn't see, I said, you're fine, man, you're fine. And really what come to mind was that he was out here enjoying nature and wasn't at home doing this, playing video games. So kids, I, I, I tend to give kids a little bit more leeway. And, uh, you know, that's just in remembrance of the fact that I was one. Well, and we'll get a, one last picture on the first camera we installed. And that should be, if I don't fall on the slimy rocks, right about now. And uh, again, for those that aren't to know, some of these rocks are slimy um, and you will fall if you're wearing these kind of treads. But one way to circumvent that with certainty is get yourself some felt bottom boots and uh, you go across here like it's dry ground. Well, let's get through this multi-floor rose and get on the orange Honda pumpkin. It has turned out to just be a gem. I mean, I did have to put some money in it. I bought this at auction, WTC. I paid $2,600 for it, which is about run-of-the-mill for these. Um, if you see them on Facebook or Craigslist, you're going to see them for $25 to $3. Um, this has a rebuilt, completely rebuilt transmission. It's basically brand new, and it runs like a top. I'd have to have three bills for it if I sold it. Thanks for watching. I know this isn't your typical run-of-the-mill red tractors, poles, plow days, whatever, but it is a part of my life enough where, at least for me, I'm gonna document it. I'll see you at the next video. Maybe a pole, maybe a plow day, who knows. Boom!